Hey, welcome to the Allison Bramlett Podcast. So glad that you're joining me today. Please like, share, comment, write a review. Need all the help I can get. And my husband would probably love the help himself since he has to pay for everything that I do. Shout out to you, Jeff Bramlett. Love you bunches. So today, what are we going to talk about? Struggle with the juggle. <laughs> How many of you just sometimes struggle with the juggle in life? I know that I have before, but obstacles don't prevent you from your calling. They prepare you for it. What did I just say? That's right. Obstacles don't prevent you from your calling. They prepare you for it. So many times we think of an obstacle as a roadblock that we just stop at. No, no. It's a preparation. It shows you how to deal with something, how to press through, how to go on with something. So the, the struggle actually makes you learn how to juggle better. And in life, we're all juggling and wearing many different hats. I know all of us, if we got in a room, we could all compare our stories. Everyone's got lots going on. That's why I think Paul in the Bible said, hey, let's talk about Jesus crucified, resurrected, and nothing else. Why did he say that? Because he thought, man, let's not talk about ourselves. We've all got life. We all have messes. We all have junk. We all have stuff. We all need miracles. We've all, we've all had hurts. We've all had bondages and strongholds. But there's only one answer to all of that, and that's Jesus. And he's the one that makes our obstacles opportunities. He's the one that takes those things that we thought were problems and makes them promises. He's the guy that makes the difference. And you cannot be satisfied with average. You have to go ahead and know people are the purpose. God's got a big call for my life, and I am pushing forward. So you will have to be more strategic in life to keep your balance. The more you do, the more you deal with, the more you begin to juggle. It's not that you have to be, the struggle has to be harder, but you just have to be more strategic. When you get more strategic, the struggle gets less. What does that mean? It means you have to be more organized. Um, you can't be lazy. You can't procrastinate. You have to go ahead and decide, I'm going to put myself in order. You have to have courageous communication. You've got to speak that truth in love. Courage is the virtue that makes all others happen. I mean, you've got to go ahead and say, I'm going to be courageous. I'm going to get this stuff. I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to go ahead and trust you, Lord, in everything that I do. So one thing that I've always said is you've got to be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's right. The Holy Spirit is our comforter. And when we're uncomfortable, he comes in. And that's when he says what's impossible for you to do, you can do in my strength. I can help you out. And so go ahead and get comfortable <laughs> with being uncomfortable in life. Growth is uncomfortable because we have never been there before. Isn't that true? That when you've never been somewhere before, that can be a a little bit of a stretch that can be what's uncomfortable that can be part of that that juggle and the the struggle of it but once you get there and once you're in that environment you think this is not as bad as i thought it would be you're you're glad you did it same thing there you've got to get out of the comfort zone you are good enough and you were created for such a time as this god never said you needed to be comfortable he just said to be content and be courageous that's right god never said i want you comfortable he said, I want you to be content, and I want you to be courageous. So today, don't be looking for comfort. Be looking for opportunities where you can be courageous. That's where it matters. That's why I believe you're a leader. That's why I believe we all are. There's opportunities everywhere for us to be courageous in our lives, to have courageous communication, for us to do something outside the box, for us to stretch ourselves. Um, and, and there's always, truthfully, a little frustration and the flexibility of the stretch. You know, it's frustrating sometimes to really stretch. Well, you need stretching partners. I know when my husband played professional baseball, he would stretch, but to like get a good stretch, normally there'd be someone that would push or pull to, so you could just go a little bit further than you had before. There's sometimes a little frustration in that. And you, it's like there, there's a pushback. Well, we need those things. Those breaking points are either where we have the breakthroughs or the breakdowns. And I'm believing you're going to be flexible enough with the help of the Holy Spirit to have those breakthroughs. And bold leaders impact. We talked about that a few weeks ago, that to be impactful, you have to take an impact. Bold leaders impact mindsets. They, in, they impact skill sets, tool sets. They impact upsets and even resets so what can we do we just got to get impactful so here's some things i want to ask you what is the most memorable thing that you've done so far this year 
so far this year was the most memorable thing that you've done that causes you to be uncomfortable? What's something you did that stretched you? And, and not for yourself, something you did maybe in your job, in your personal life, something you did that stretched you. What could you do 10% less or more that would stretch you out of your leadership in your comfort zone? What's something you could do 10% less or more? I know I'm asking some different questions today, but I think it's important that we decide to go ahead and begin to move ourselves. So today, be someone to somebody. Be a leader to someone. Stretch yourself. Don't be quick to disqualify. Don't be quick to disqualify yourself and don't be quick to disqualify someone else. It's okay to tell people and have honest conversations. I've shared about this before. That's what I was saying earlier. Courageous conversations, truth and love. It's okay to check your attitudes. It's okay to be flexible. But, but go ahead and say, what can I do to help qualify myself and qualify someone else? Let's qualify each other instead of disqualify each other. I've learned in my own life that we may impress people with our strengths, but we connect in our weaknesses. What does that mean? Well, even on a team, everything I can do by myself causes us not to be connected. But it's those things where I really need help that draw us together. So it's where you need to ask someone, hey, can you really help me do that? Guess what that does? That vulnerability pulls someone else into your life. We need to be able to be vulnerable. It's in our weaknesses that he is strong. So here's some things, little tools for today. As we grow in our leadership, as we grow in love. Start. Success is not just big things. It's not a big step in the future. Small disciplines done consistently lead to big results over time. The small things no one sees that lead to the big things everyone wants. You know, most of the time, the person that has the figure that you want works out harder than you, eats better than you, does things that you don't see, probably does a nighttime routine. Um, probably someone that has skincare that I want is washing their face a lot more than I am and putting lotions on it and eye creams and doing stuff. They're doing things that I'm not doing. They're doing the small things that no one sees. But, those, but then it leads up to the big things everyone wants. It matters. Maybe you're wanting more money. Maybe you're wanting to go on a better vacation. I will tell you, in my own life, there was a time that Jeff and I really wanted to do some vacation things. So something we did is I chose to not have my nails done and I would not go get like coffees like everyone else for a while. And I love Maxwell House Light at home, honestly. And I do like coffee. Nothing wrong with going and getting you a coffee. Let me clarify this. But if you took your $5 a week coffee or $5 a day coffee and five times five, that's only five days a week. That's $25. If you do that, that's $100 a month. Well, that's $1,200 right there that you could have toward vacation money when you feel like, man, I don't ever get to go do what everyone else does. Well, you just had a girl's trip with the massage. Come on now. So it's not really that you can't. It's just what you decide to do. It's how we decide to live. And so you have to decide what you really want. Stop. Do more of what matters to you to go up you'll have to let go of some other things. I think about like a hot air balloon. As a hot air balloon goes up, there are some weights on that they have to cut off. There are some things that you will have to do in life that you'll have to get rid of so you can go higher. And you'll know what those are. God wants to increase you where you can go to higher levels, but there may be some things, some weights, some things that so easily beset you or beset you that you're going to have to get rid of. That's what the Word of God says. And so many times we'll say, Lord, I need you to get rid of this for me. But He says for you to lay aside those things, we have to cut them off. How do we cut them? With the Word of God. We take what the Word says. When He shows it to us, then we have to put the Word, the sword of the Word to it, cut it off, and then we have to live out the Word in our life. So what do you need to let go of? so that you can be a better you. Not do a better do, but be a better you. A better you leads to a better do. Most of the time, the reason we don't do better is because we're not a better us individually. If there's areas in our life that are going undisciplined, it's because really we don't have a personal spiritual discipline that's in line in our life. There's really some things out of kilter, probably those things that I said no one's seeing at home, the small things that need to get in order. 
We, the Lord is more interested in who we are becoming than what we are doing. Because the who we are becoming will change the what we are doing and make us better producers. So what is one of your greatest godly characters or qualities? If I were to ask you that today, if we'd be sitting across from each other and I would say, hey, tell me one of your greatest godly character qualities. What could you say to me? What would you list? Could you start writing them down? Would it be some of the fruit of the spirit in your life? Could you say those things? So being a better who, being a better who instead of dealing with a better do. What important things do you tend to forget? For me, there's times in my life that these are questions that I've asked myself and what are three things that I could do to make me a better who? I would write things down and actually I still do on a regular basis. I'll say, Lord, what are three things that can make me a better who? Recently, I was with someone and they said, I'd really like when we're talking if I could have a little one-on-one -on -one more time with you. And honestly, when I'm seeing that person and if the Lord allows me to, and I've actually said, hey, let's try to get together a little bit more every now and then off and on. I want to do that. Why? Because I want to be a better who. That's what I'm working on. And what area would be the hardest for you to be accountable in? What area of your life would be the hardest for you to be accountable in? Would it be in your relationships? Would it be in your money? Would it be in your work ethics? Would it be what what area of your life would it be? Maybe on what you're watching or looking at, uh, maybe um, socially. You know what area of your life would it be hardest for you to be accountable in? It's a real good place to look at and say, Lord, I need to get some things in order. Let me focus because it's time for me to be the who that you've created me to be. Let my life shine for you because now is the time. It's time. I, I've been saying, Lord, now is the time. Today is the day for salvation. Today is the day for change. So here's some questions I ask myself on a regular basis. Got them written down. I look back through this all the time. Hey, what are you reading? Well, you can read Don't Take It Personally. I know someone that wrote a great book. But I actually believe you should always be reading the Bible and then add something to it. Don't let the books around you outweigh the book that can read you and needs to get in you and that's the word of god let it read you and you read it what are you excited about what do you want people to hear from you what do you want people to remember about you if you could do anything at all that would make every day seem special what would that be so today Ask yourself, how can I learn how to juggle the struggle better so that I can be a better who and not be so focused on the do? I'm praying for you today. Love to hear from you and excited about what God's got planned for you. <music>